this is Dazzling One, and this week I will be covering some pretty weird news that I came across when I was looking up Huffington Post weird news. I want to start off by reading the article because it's quite interesting, and I apologize if I mispronounce some words because I've been known to do that. Without further ado, let's talk about Krampus. Santa Claus isn't the only one coming to town. In some cultures in Eastern Europe, he is accompanied by Krampus, a horrible monster that's pretty much the exact opposite of jolly old Saint Nick. Instead of giving presents to good kids, Krampus snatches the bad ones. On Saturday, the village of Kalpleis and the Czech Republic celebrated what just might be the creepiest Christmas tradition ever with a parade of people dressed as Krampus. While Krampus festivals have been celebrated for generations in the Tyrol region of Austria, they are becoming increasingly popular in the Czech Republic. There are a lot of different stories or tales about what Krampus will do to you if you are naughty, Molly Bach, a resident of Vienna, Austria, told the Orion, but he travels with a broom-type thing to hit kids with. The broom-type thing is usually a bundle of sticks. A Krampus festival in Austria got out of hand earlier this year when at least one of the actors began beating people with the sticks. Five teens sustained injuries. My daughter now has a cast on her right hand. Both her feet are covered with wells and are swollen and bloody, an angry parent told the local. The violence has nothing to do with the tradition. The Krampus costumes at the Kalpleis parade were quite elaborate. Getty Images reported that they were often made of sheep or goat skin and had large cowbells attached to the waist. Krampus has origins in pagan traditions in Germany, where he was originally one of the sons of Hell, the Norse god of the underworld. Smithsonian Magazine reported, Since Krampus was so downright terrifying, especially to those who were not familiar with the festival, officials in one Austrian community visited newly settled Syrian and Iraqi refugees to let them know what to expect when St. Nicholas and the Krampus creatures knock on their door. Social worker Nicole Cranebitter told NBC News, she said the newcomers had lots of fun with the celebration. This year, Krampus has received a little more attention than usual with the release of the holiday horror comedy film Krampus. To date, the movie has earned more than $28 million at the box office. So this creature was interesting to me because A, Krampus means claw. Also, Krampus is considered the evil sidekick of Santa Claus, and he's a mythical Christmas demon, and he's a part of pre-Christian Alpine tradition. And what is interesting about this is that in 2004, because of a series of books by Monte Beach Camp, it did much to familiarize Americans with Krampus. In Austro-Bavarian Alpine folklore, he is hairy, usually brown or black, and has the cloven hooves and horns of a goat. His long pointed tongue lolls out. Some believe it is linked to Germanic paganism, although the origins of the creature are unclear. In Norse tradition, he's said to be the son of hell, and in 1958, Maurice Bruce wrote, There seems to be little doubt as to his true identity, for in no other form is the full regalia of the horn god of the witches so well preserved. The birch, apart from its phallic significance, may have a connection with the initiation rites of certain witch covens, rites which entailed binding and scourging as a form of mock death. The change could have been introduced as a Christian attempt to bind the devil, but again, they could be a remnant of pagan initiation rites. So what I found interesting about this, as I was pointing out, was that it's hairy all over its body, it has horns, it's often resembles what many think the devil looks like. And just going back to previous videos that I did, it to me looks a lot like a yeti kind of figure, or what some might think of as Bigfoot, and it also seems to resemble what I might say a Sadar would look like, or Serum or Shedum from Jewish folklore, or the Sadar from Greek mythology. And I talked about in the video I believe I did on Movies Decoded, and I did it in another video, that in New Orleans, the whole Mardi Gras is a ritual to the fertility god Pan, who is a Sadar in appearance. And the Sedum or Serum were goat demons believed to reside in the desert, much similar to the Jinn of Arabic folklore. Jinn also called genies, which is where this whole concept that 
You can have a genie in a bottle and you can make a wish are said to take on various forms. From what I've heard, there are three different types. Some look more like what we would think of a fallen angel. They have large wings, they're solid, sometimes horned. Others are more like smoke and vapor, they can disappear, and others are spirits and like I said earlier, they can take on the form of anything or anyone that they want to and trick you. And then we would most likely think of them as fallen angels or demons. So it's interesting to see once again that this figure or these types of creatures pop up in other traditions. It also is interesting to me because this weekend I was showing someone a documentary. I believe it was Hollywood, full disclosure. You can look it up. It gets taken down a lot and I had to look it up because people are always re-uploading this stuff. And in it, he covered everything from Star Wars to Batman and he opened it by talking about how Hollywood tells you the same story over and over again. They just have to find a new way to tell it to you. And he started with a movie made in the 70s based on a novel that was the man that would be king and he connected it back to the book of Enoch and the story of Simjaza and Azazel and then slowly he introduced other characters and a lot of it had to do with um, Osiris, Set, and Horus as well and I just saw when I went to the movie theater to watch The Mockingjay Part 2 that they're making a movie called Gods of Egypt coming out next February. It's about the story of Horus and Set and Osiris, I believe, so just interesting to see this play out. But what I got from it that I found interesting, because he mentioned Star Wars, and that's coming out very soon, and it's going to be a huge release, is that Chewbacca's character resembles what some may think of as al Jassasa from the Hadith, which is from Islamic lore, and pretty much with that creature, it's supposed to be hairy in the front and hairy in the back, and it's supposed to be traveling with the Dajjal, which is the Muslim version of the Antichrist. Speaking of strange movies that may contain al Jassasa, if you look at the Monsters, Inc. poster, you have Soli, who once again is a horned, hairy creature who is a friend to this, this green monster with one eye, and in Legends of the Dajjal, it's said that he would have one eye because one would be injured through a mortal head wound similar to what many believe will happen to the Antichrist and that one eye will bulge like a grape. So it's interesting to see that even in a Disney movie they sort of cater to that idea. It reminded me of the epic of Gilgamesh when Gilgamesh travels with Inkadu, which was a wild man who in some who is believed to be a hybrid like figure and over time he's civilized but he dies tragically. So the thing about it is you see this same narrative pop up again and again and it just makes me wonder with all of the sightings of Bigfoot, the Yeti and everything else, is this all connected to Al Jassasa? Is this creature something real? Are we describing something that has already been there and it's going to reveal itself eventually? It also lends to the belief that how much Christmas itself is pagan in origin and how it was appropriated due to syncretic holidays, we now think of it as a Christian holiday. What other connection that can be drawn to Krampus and his goat-like nature is that there is such thing as a Yule goat. In the video I uploaded last week, I showed you that there was a pagan will of the year, and this is what our lovely Gregorian calendar is based off of. And that is why I'm not a fan of holidays. And during this time, it is Yule season, and there is a Yule goat. So I thought that was another interesting connection you could draw there. Christmas tree itself is a phallic symbol. And it's also interesting that this Krampus figure is associated with a phallus as well, from the account that I read you by Maurice Bruce and which is an initiation rites and Sadars were also associated with the phallic symbol as was Nimrod who they based Osiris but really Nimrod and Osiris its true form is from Azazel because as I've talked about before there have been two world orders already and we're moving towards the third one the first was in the antediluvian world when the Watchers 
reigned and they set themselves up as false gods and Azazel ruled is what we might think of the Antichrist figure and then the second world order was with Nimrod and his wife Samarimus and the third world order will be with the Antichrist the false prophet and as I suggested potentially a female figure because we always leave that out but if you think about it it's vital within many pagan traditions that you're not just dealing with masculine energy but also female energy and this whole idea that the Holy Spirit is feminine in nature which is not true but many people believe this and a lot of it is a bastardization of the understanding of the word some of it I think is confusion it lends me to believe that there will be some type of female figure as well and so it's interesting to see that once again this figure this Sadar this Yeti, this abominable snowman, Al Jassasa, Inca, do whatever you want to call these creatures that are hairy with horns, whether they're friend or foe, keep coming up, and I believe it will have a vital role, for all we know. The other thing, really quick, I want to read is I took this from Wikipedia when I was looking into the abominable snowman, since it has a familiar place in our hearts when you think of Christmas movies. Um, according to H. Silver, the Yeti was a part of the pre-Buddhist beliefs of several Himalayan people. He was told that the Lepcha people worshipped a glacier being as god of the hunt. He also reported that the followers of Bon religion once believed the blood of the Miri god or wild man had use in certain mystical ceremonies. The being was depicted as an ape-like creature who carries a large stone as a weapon and makes a whistling swoosh sound. So I found it interesting that, like, once again, even though we're talking about something in the mountains or something in the wilderness, sometimes it's described as ape-like and hairy. Sometimes we're thinking of desert demonic goats. We think of Baphomet. He is an amalgamation of both male and female and is half man, half goat. We see these figures reoccurring, and it's interesting that even Christmas itself has ties. The other strange piece of news that I wanted to share as well before I close this video is that apparently there's going to be a large asteroid that zooms past Earth. Of course, not close enough to devastate it, but it's just interesting that we had a Halloween asteroid shaped like a skull, and we had a Friday the 13th UFO because it was an unidentified flying object, some kind of space debris, and now we have a Christmas Eve asteroid. So I don't know what's going on, where they're getting these stories, but I'm just saying it's strange news indeed. I hope you found this interesting and that you have a wonderful week. Take care and God bless you.